pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll. Ram Kassoon? Here. Johnson? Here. John Francois? Here. Sid? Here. Witt? Here. Kleiner? Here. Burr? Here. Massey? Here. President Rodriguez? Here. We have a quorum. Approval minutes. We have uh, two common council meeting minutes to approve tonight, September 5th, 2017, and October 27th, 2017. Motion to approve both minutes. Alderman Massey, seconded by. Alderman Burr. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence? Nothing this evening. For the good of the city, anyone would like to address this council, please step forward. You will have four minutes. Last time I was here, um, you know, I, I was accused of uh, election fraud. So, um, you know, I, I thought this was a democracy. I thought, I thought that I'm going to stand here and protest for every signature I got on my petition, and I, I'm, I'm not moving, even if I have to remain silent. But I'm not violent. I'm just going to give the people who lost their voice. I'm just going to stand up for those people, and it. It's disgusting how the Democrats rigged the, the primary against Bernie Sanders. It's disgusting how in here in Middletown we have collusion with the, the, the Republic, Republican committee chair and, and the, the, the mayor of Middletown. Like, I thought this was democracy. Isn't that treason? No. I'm going to call on, I know how ridiculous this is, but I'm going to call on the police to arrest Joe DeSalfano for treason. Point, point of order. Enough. Do I have a motion to rule on that order? I'll move right to the second. You're, you're done. Chief, remove him. Carry on. Carry on. All right, we're going to resume for the good of the city. If anybody would like to address the council, please step forward. Okay, remarks of department heads, economic development. Good evening, everyone. Just want to update you on the DRI, the Downtown Revitalization Initiative. Our facade, as you know, we were awarded the 10 million. Out of the 10 million, one of the projects approved was the facade program for the bid district for a million dollars. We are going to be rolling out that program with a workshop and application process next week. Be sending out um, information on uh, exact date and time and. The mayor will do a presentation and we'll all be available for the workshop. Also tonight you have a resolution for the architect that we went through the RFP process for the facade program and we hope to bring him on board to be part of this process as well. And uh, as they mentioned during the Nixle presentation, tree lighting ceremony is coming. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> this uh, yeah. Tree. This Wednesday, the tree will arrive here in Festival Square. Uh, did I say something? This Wednesday. Um, the tree is being donated by Mr. Whedon, and um, they're going to start cutting at 8 a.m. in the morning, and it should arrive around 9.30 in the morning here at Festival Square. It's a great time to come watch how the tree comes into our city and, and gets uh, put up on Festival Square. Um, Everybody involved from the police department to Jacob and his team um, will be involved that day in getting the tree set for the tree lighting ceremony. Also on the Paramount front, um, just want to 
thank everybody that is working hard down there, Eileen, Stephanie, and the rest of the team. We've been getting an increasing number of patrons for the movies. Just yesterday for a matinee, we had over 100 people. And that's pretty impressive uh, for a matinee uh, this, this past week. Our Hearthon and Sci-Fi weekend went well. We have numerous people attend those and good results. Also, this Thursday, um, there's a lecture being sponsored by SUNY Orange regarding autism, and it's sold out. We have over 1,000 people Thursday night at the theater. And we're working uh, on an active um, live concert series for 2018. Once we have um, those uh, acts booked, we will be releasing the names and, and uh, show dates. And that's all I have for this evening. Any questions for Maria? <coughs> Maria? Thank you. DPW Commissioner. Good evening. Uh, we have several uh, resolutions before you tonight. Um, one of them is, so I'm not going to update you about our uh, operation on DPW tonight. We'll just go <coughs> over the resolutions and if you have any questions. Uh, one of them is um, Sterling Street Sewer Project. Uh, we need an additional $50,000 to fund the project. It's not only for uh, change order number three. It's, it's uh, what is needed in there to make the whole project whole. And um, the project will be progressing uh, this week and next week. You'll see some excavation on Wisner Avenue by the railroad tracks, by the lumber yard. And then we're going to be doing another uh, realignment of the sewer uh, between uh, Little Avenue and Houston, and um, so we will be short about $50,000. So the vote tonight will be to approve the additional funding of $50,000 for the project. Um, another project which is um, to follow with what Maria said about the $10 million grant, uh, request for you to authorize us, to authorize the mayor to hire Lehman and Getz for designing, redesigning the parking lots at Orchard Street James Street and behind uh, James Street parking lot and behind uh, City Hall and around the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the skate park and that will include creating green infrastructure within the parking lots. Um, another another resolution before you tonight will be uh, the mayor was able to uh, to to get us a grant from uh, uh, the Empire State Development for five five hundred thousand dollars. That $500,000 is subject to city spending $2.5 million for upgrading, uh, upgrading our infrastructure. So this money will be about $3 million altogether, will be uh, for uh, replacing a 20-inch water main, which is extremely essential water main for us, from the water treatment plant, or, or uh, it's going to go along uh, 211 up to the second entrance of the uh, former psychiatric center. That will be a great improvement for our water distribution system for rel re reliability and redundancy. Uh, part of it, you will be a part of that resolution. You'll be approving, requested to approve um, a proposal from uh, BNL Engineering for about five hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars for the design of that project. So the total project is around three million dollars. Half of that three million dollar is the uh, grant. Um, Another uh, resolution before you is for uh, servicing our um, air blowers at the wastewater treatment plant. And another resolution before you is, let's see, Amy's Kitchen. I think somebody will be talking about Amy's Kitchen agreement. And um, there are several other resolutions, smaller ones in here. If you have any questions for me, I'll be happy to address them when you're, when you're ready. Any questions for the commissioner? Oh, American Civil. Is everything now signed with Mayfield? No. no. We sent them, as a matter of fact, the mayor and I sent them an email saying what else they need from us, and we still don't have, don't have uh, an answer yet. Do you need us? So before I pass away. Is a home number or a cell phone number? I'm going like, to run that along the bottom of the screen. <laughs> <laughs> we could send JJ to his house. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I don't have any good. We're ready to go. We're ready to, adverti to advertise. The plans are ready. We're ready to go out for a bit. We just need the signed contract in there to make sure that the funding is in place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
Alderman um, Kleiner? Uh, Commissioner, how old do you think that 20-inch water main is that we're replacing so that people have an idea on the, on the need for doing I think it? it uh, I think it's, uh, it was installed in the 20s. And uh, you may recall back in, Ju in July 2016, we had a major water main break, break right across from the mo mobile gas station in West Main and took out a huge section of the city of Middletown. They were without water. That was, that was part of that 20-inch water main, the high-pressure water main. It's I believe it goes back to the 20s, 1920s. Yeah, about 100 years older. old. Them. Yeah, we have older mains yet. Yeah. <laughs> we okay. have 1886, 12-inch water main. That's also high pressure, the one that goes on oh, Lake right. Avenue. Yeah, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jacob. Corporation Council. Good evening. <clears throat> like Jacob, I'd like to go through some of the resolutions and just put some information on the record and maybe uh, highlight some things for you in, in the event there are some questions. Uh, Jacob mentioned the uh, hiring of uh, Lehman and Getz uh, for engineering and planning services for the parking lots in connection with the DRI. Um, w w normally, you know, our procurement policy does say for professional services we should go out for RFPs when possible. For instance, we did with the facade program. Um, but um, uh, at Jacob's request and the mayor's request, we specifically contacted our contacts at the Secretary of State's office uh, who are working with us on the DRI and mentioned that this, this company has already been working with the city for prior work on the parking lots. And based on that experience, could we uh, avoid our RFP process and bring them on directly? And their answer was yes. The whole point of the DRI is to have projects that are shovel ready and will be expedited. So they like the idea of being able to go along and direct directly hire them. So I just wanted to clarify that if I, if I could. Uh, I'm going to go in chronological order. There is a resolution to set the tax sale. This is uh, our annual tax sale for properties that have not been, the tax liens of which have not been purchased by our bulk tax sale purchaser. Um, um, notices either have gone out or will be going out from the treasurer's office to all property owners. We'll also be sending notices out to mortgage holders and such, advising them of the tax sale auction. And so if you get questions from constituents, uh, they have until really the morning of the tax sale to pay up the back taxes to avoid the auction. This does not convey property, but it transfers the city tax lien to the bidder at the sale. So it infuses cash into our treasury and gives someone else the right to hold the liens. And then if they're not paid within the redemption period, usually a year, then the property owner could lose the property. So if you know anyone, uh, the list will be published in the paper and on the website. So if you know of anyone in that situation, I would suggest you encourage them uh, to pay their taxes to avoid the tax sale. Uh, the, on the next page of the agenda, there is a reference to, uh, there's a resolution to authorize the mayor to sign any and all contracts and documents pertaining to the DRI initiative. This is just a broad overall uh, resolution so that for any time the mayor has to sign documents for, to effectuate the DRI, we don't have to come back to you as a council to authorize them to sign. So again, to help expedite the process. Uh, there's a reference here to the uh, uh, amending the city code for water charges. Uh, that couples with the proposed local law regarding sewers. Now, as you may know from looking at the code, uh, we have provisions in the water code and in the sewer code that allow us to charge out-of-city users the same or higher rates than what we charge city residents. Well, this is, is uh, driven as, as a result of the Indigo Agreement and Amy's Kitchen. Uh, when we entered into the agreement for the Indigo Reservoir with Orange County, one of the requirements was that we set aside some of the potential water that will come out of that reservoir uh, at a lower rate for a regionally benefiting economic development project. That project happens to have been designated as Amy's Kitchen. Uh, our code, though, did not allow us at that point to set lower water and or sewer rates. So the purpose of the resolution with respect to the water code uh, and, and the local law with respect to the sewer code is to fully implement that aspect of the Indigo Reservoir uh, Agreement that you've already approved and, 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 has, and the county approved and signed off on and to help bring about the Amy's Kitchen Project, uh, which is before you tonight. And by the way, the reason why the sewer uh, or, uh, law is going to be a local law is because um, you have the concept of what they call legislative equivalency. When we changed the sewer code last year or two years ago, to institute the industrial pretreatment program, we adopted the new chapter 389 by local law. 
So in order to amend a, a, a code that's been adopted by local law, you have to pass a local law, not just a mere resolution uh, to do that. That's why you have two different formats uh, to make those changes. As, as uh, Jacob mentioned, and I'm sure the mayor will talk about, the Amy's Kitchen resolution uh, is in front of you tonight. There's a two-part resolution. One is CRA, and uh, sent to you uh, as separately from the uh, resolutions for tonight's meeting were, was a finding statement issued by the Town of Goshen Planning Board. They were the lead agency for the Amy's project. The city of Middletown is what's known as an involved agency under CRA, but the Town of Goshen Planning Board took the lead as lead agency, and they issued a finding statement, and, and if you took uh, some time to read it, you'll see that in there is addressed the water and sewer lines that the city and, and Amy's have been negotiating uh, and, and the CRA impacts of that. Um, and so what, what you're doing by the re CRA resolution tonight for Amy's is simply approving, if you will, not that you really had much to do with this <laughs> as an involved agency, but you are saying, yes, the Town of Goshen Planning Board adopted the findings uh, with respect to CRA, and we will basically piggyback on that for our own CRA determination with respect to the Amy's project. And then you have the substantive resolution uh, authorizing the mayor to sign the agreement with Amy's Kitchen, which has been negotiated over many, many, many months, uh, including uh, with the mayor and uh, Commissioner Twill and myself, along with representatives of Amy's Kitchen. But again, I'm certain the mayor will be talking about that further. The last resolution is uh, authorizing a survey with Fusco Engineering for the former Psych Center. As you know, the state has approached the city and, and inquired about our, our purchasing a number of the buildings on the, uh, on the uh, old Psych Center campus. Um, we've worked through the terms of the contract uh, and, um, and we're now, now in agreement on the contract. Normally, one would sign a contract, then get a survey and incorporate what they call a Schedule A description, a surveyor's description of the property. The state is insisting that we get the surveyor's description of all the properties first, then incorporate that into the contract to be signed. A little bit backwards, but uh, again, they've assured us that uh, they want us to get the property, but we do need this step. And again, uh, although we do generally want RFPs for professional services, Fusco Engineering has done a lot of work on the Psych Center surveying and subdivision work, and, and they were the most ready to go forward. We did check with other surveyors, but they're the most ready to go forward. They've got the work already done, and so we think we're going to get a quick product out of them as well. So I just wanted to bring you up to date on reason behind some of the resolutions, put some items on the record so that the record is clear on that, but I am certainly open to questions if you have them, and I'm sorry to take so much time. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Kleiner. Uh, I just want to uh, agree with your last statement in that I don't think anyone knows the psych center better than uh, Mr. Fusco does. He grew up, right. grew up across. Perhaps you, Jerry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but from a surveying standpoint. From the surveying, yes, because he did all the subdivision maps, and he grew up right across the street. They're very familiar, so that's a, that's a right. good move. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Superintendent of Recreation. Good evening, folks. Just a couple really quick things here. Um, there's a resolution where the rec department, we're just updating our fee schedule in the city code book. That will include that $100 security deposit that we have spoken about in the past. But um, looking years past, there was quite a few things that were missing from this fee schedule, and that, that is all up to date and matching all of our programs. Um, the Middletown CARES grant has come to an end. We've had that for 10 years here in the city. Um, it's just the funding that has come to an end that Tremendous collaborations have been brought together due to that grant. A lot of those collaborations will continue. Uh, agencies will still be working together. Uh, this Thursday, there will still be a Middletown CARES meeting here like there always has been for 10 years, and it'll be more of a grassroots effort. So I think you're still gonna be hearing about Middletown CARES, which is a great thing for the city, our kids, and our families. And I have to give credits to all the agencies that wanna keep it going. Um, talking about collaborations, um, we know we collaborate with the school district a lot to provide things for our, our kids and families, but we've also collaborated with Cornell Cooperative Extension, and we've offered a computer science club uh, mm -hmm. to the kids. Um, that was being um, a lot of attention drawn to that, and quite a few kids are signing up through Cornell, and you know it'll be held at the rec department, which is a great thing. Uh, you'll see the park improvements are starting again up at Maple Hill. The old equipment is gone. 
Uh, we will not be interfering with that project where the water pipes still have to go in, but about three-fourths of the equipment can be installed without interfering with that project, and we need to do that because there's nowhere to store the equipment that's been ordered. Um, the city, once again, will be receiving solutions funding um, for 2018. Uh, as, as you know, it covers our summer feeding program, it covers our teen center, uh, it covers the summer leadership academy, and we, it covers our too good for violence, too good for drugs, and we've gotten an additional $5,000 now to go towards the, the, our boxing program and to help kids that can't afford to go there. So the city, the county sees that as a very positive thing. Um, and I gotta give credit to the police department there for helping us uh, and uh, more officers becoming involved with that. So that's a great thing too. And then with the holidays coming up, we have tons of special events running through the rec department and the bid and the city. And I just encourage people to grab the Facebook page, go on the website, look at our brochure or, or call the rec office so you're not missing tons of these free programs that'll be starting, starting with the, the tree lighting ceremony with bid. So the holidays are always busy here in Middletown and there's a lot of giving going on. Um, we talk about collaborations, MVP, healthcare is gonna be given the rec department 80 children's coats and which we're collaborating with the school district, the, the nurses, the social workers, to make sure those coats get in to families that need it most. And I think that's what's important with collaboration, which this city does so well. That's all I have. Any questions for Chris? Thank you, Chris. Uh, police chief is a little tied up. <laughs> city clerk. Uh, tomorrow's election day, as you know. Uh, the polls open at 6 a.m., close at 9 p.m. All the polls will be open in the city of Middletown. Anybody wishing to know where they can vote can call our office at 346-4166, and uh, we'll help you on where you're going to be going. We've already gotten some calls the last few days. Also, the Middletown Walk Hill Veterans Council will again have their annual Veterans Day celebration Saturday, November 11th at the Elks Lodge, and that's uh, the Saturday at 11 a.m. That's all I have for this evening. John. Thank you, John. Mayor. Surprised you didn't call me Benedict. Right? <laughs> I'm going to keep. Uh, let me just give you a brief um, for the public because our, our seven o'clock meeting was the um, the budget presentation. No, our 6 o'clock meeting was the budget presentation, or 7 o'clock was the Nixle presentation. And hopefully you were all impressed with the Nixle presentation and what, the, uh, uh, what this company offers for better communication in the city with our residents. As you know, when, usually when we have a parade or um, uh, small things like that, small to us, but big to somebody who doesn't have the proper communication, that uh, they'll be able to sign up and remove or receive notification that Highland Avenue is going to be closed, no parking, or whatever street that they're on, it's no parking. Okay. So uh, there's many benefits to it, including the reverse 911 for emergency purposes, and we hope to have that system put in place um, as soon as the chief can, uh, once authorized by the council to do so, as soon as we can get it in place, it'll be uh, better off for all. So um, hopefully the chief will... Um, make a presentation at another at another time but um, I think we all on the board have a pretty good idea and hopefully the public has a pretty good idea of what the Nixle system offers uh, to them in regards to the uh, 2018 city budget uh, we, we did do the presentation at 6 the public hearing um, the give a brief overview of the budget uh, the general operating budget is about thirty nine million eight hundred and thirty thousand dollars the largest increase of expenditure comes in the area of employee benefits. And employee benefits, which include pension, workman's comp, health insurance, payroll taxes, and others, have gone up over $900,000 from 17 to 18. That's with a significant decrease in workman's comp. Uh, health insurance line has gone up 16.93% and uh, pension um, services have gone up 7.81%. So we have, um, um, out of the 1 million, 1.1 million in additional spending, 
uh, over 900,000 comes from that one area alone. The average property tax will go up about, I believe Don said $55 per, per house. Uh, we are below the tax cap, so if there's another eligibility criteria for the state tax refund, that $55 will be covered by the state tax refund, um, which was uh, over the past couple of years, which we also qualified for. Uh, water and sewer rates will be going up 28 cents per thousand. And our tax levy for 2018 is $19,200,436. Um, we are under the cap by $2,500. Now the reason for leading with that and leading with the water and sewer issues is the Amy's agreement, uh, which you have in front of you again this evening. As you know, we've negotiated with Amy's and you folks have been very supportive of the Amy's agreement and also the CPV agreement. Uh, what we are looking for is revenue to offset um, uh, which we see as, as Jacob um, gave to you significant capital cost over the next several years that are, we're going to be incurring to protect our underground utility. And that is primarily our, our water and sewer lines. The $500,000 grant um, has to be matched with $2.5 million of city money in order to qualify for the grant to bring the 20-inch line down Monhagen Avenue. <coughs> the city share might be covered in part by the um, hookup fees, the two, $2,000 that we get for each uh, new construction hookup fee, we're doing the analysis now with the treasurer's office to see how much of that money is eligible to be put into the capital, into the capital line. But equally as important as that, uh, let, let's say there's a million dollars there, we also have the ability now to offset some of those, rev, um, some of those expenses with revenue such as Amy's. As you know, the Amy's agreement, it's not an Amy's agreement, the Indigo agreement, I mean, um, the city has access to about a million gallons a day of billable water from Indigo. 375,000 had to be used for a project designated by the county executive as a regional economic development project. With us here tonight, um, and he has handed out um, a PowerPoint, um, is Phil Dropkin representing Amy's. Um, Amy's, as you know, will not only be a very large employer in the area, but they will also be, uh, and they're located in the town of Goshen along the Heritage Trail, will also be a significant water user for the city of Middletown. The way I've presented it in the past, and I believe it's still accurate, is that we will be processing um, county water because our replacement of our 375,000 gallons of water that is going to Amy's will be in essence replaced in capacity terms by the million plus gallons a day from the Amy's agreement. And just to put everything in context for, for the public also, a million gallons a day of water and sewer in the city of Middletown selling to outside users will generate approximately $6 million a year. So when people ask me that how are you going to pay for all of this infrastructure improvements that you're talking about that are necessary to replace 100-year-old water lines, 20-inch lines down Lake Avenue, Wickham Avenue, Monhagen Avenue, water tanks that are um, uh, that cost millions of dollars the, and are in need of replacement. How are you going to pay for all this without significantly increasing our taxes and or our water and sewer fees? The answer is through agreements to sell water and sewer to Amy's which will generate about $800,000 per year. CPV, which will generate close to $600,000 per year. $200,000, which is budgeted in 2018 for a partial year of, of sale. So we're a city of five plus square miles. Not a heck of a lot of development uh, um, will be seen in the future with the exception of the psychiatric center. But we needed to find a funding mechanism that will make the city's infrastructure solid and safe and dependable. And we believe that we have done that with these agreements. So 
We're hoping for your continued support on the Yamis. We um, have a contractual obligation with them, um, and it is um, a very significant regional project that the uh, governor, the regional economic development people have been very supportive. Unlike CPV, I don't see any controversy with the Amy's agreement, and you know, when we reaffirm that the city of Middletown did not uh, vote on the CPV project, all we are is we made it more environmentally friendly by rather, you, rather than using groundwater to cool the CPV plant, uh, the city is providing gray water, which is treated sewage, selling it to CPV, and it's coming back and being treated again, and the city residents will enjoy the benefit of about $600,000 a year coming in. So right now we have $1.4 million a year for two for full years projected to begin around 2020 in the city coffers. We will continue to expand upon grant uh, opportunities and of course as most grants require a local match. So we're very comfortable that we're in a good position to start completing the infrastructure improvements that are necessary to move Middletown forward for the next 50 or in case of water lines, I guess 100 plus years. So um, I'd be remiss to not also acknowledge the work of um, Alderman Kleiner regarding the Nixel system. I know it began with uh, under Chief Bethencourt and Chief Iwanchu has picked it up and, and moved it along very, very quickly. And uh, Jerry, I want to thank you for your, for your work in that area on that. So at this time, I'd like to um, introduce um, Phil Dropkin. Phil is the one of the uh, regional representative Amy's and um, if you have any questions of Phil I'll bring him up but uh, you folks are pretty familiar with the project um, but uh, for the city's role um, we are going to be providing probably 375 to 385 I think it might come to 382 per day for five and a half days per per year um, and um, we're uh, very happy that we have the opportunity to participate in this economic development project for the Goshen, Middletown, uh, Walk Hill area, and way we are included, and, uh, uh, and create numerous employment opportunities for our residents also. So if you have any questions on that, I can bring Phil up, or you just want to meet Phil and give him a big hand, or whatever you like to do. You don't need to meet Phil? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We know who he is. Phil, you're out. We'll give you a little TV time in a while. <laughs> but um, other issues, you have the, uh, the DRI. As you know, the, the plan is already developed. All you're doing is um, expediting the approval process by authorizing me to sign the contracts. We're only signing contracts of the approved plan. Otherwise, you know, we'd have to bring you back for special meetings. I don't think anybody wants to do that on a regular basis. But the DRI plan is already moving I don't know if anyone's had a chance to go by the Woolworths building. There's been some change on the color scheme that's going into the building by the Architectural Review Committee and actually um, looks much better uh, than the original plan. And that project is right on, uh, right on target. And uh, I already mentioned the 20-inch water line from B&L. Uh, that project is also moving forward. Uh, we'll have more to discuss with the public. Uh, once we're ready to go co to contract regarding the acquisition of those vacant properties at, at the Middletown Psychiatric Center. But what I can say at this point is, one, these are properties that are already off the tax roll, and we are paying $1 for a significant amount of properties. We are also assuming, as we've said in the past, some responsibility for the buildings that are there, the conditions of the buildings. But um, my opinion, it's a very safe and sound investment for the city to move forward with the acquisition of those properties. But we'll do a more detailed explanation as we're about to go to contract with, um, with the state of New York after the survey is completed. Any questions? Jerry? Thank you. I have two quick questions. Um, the, our downtown music experiment expired on October 15th. That, do we have any feedback on it? It seemed like it was successful. Um, I, I did not get... I think we had one complaint, maybe one or two complaints, but they were addressed immediately, and there was no uh, um, no one crying that we not renew it. So my suggestion would be to renew it for another year. 
Okay, very good. And could you give us a very quick update on the Heritage Trail? I know there was some more things worked yes. out on that because people don't necessarily see it moving, but you say it is. Well, as, as you know, the, the Indiana bat uh, uh, trees are down that we had to make by a certain deadline. I think it was November 1st or not November 1st. J Phil probably knows more about it. Uh, than I do because Amy's the water line will also be going down the trail one question we do get is Amy's holding up the March heritage 31st. trail and the answer is no it was March 30th yeah, anyway. but uh, so the answer is no Amy's is waiting for the um, very anxiously waiting to put the water and sewer lines in that are required to go from the middle town down to uh, down to Amy's uh, we did have one uh, hang up with the county that Jacob was working on it's been resolved and that was the um, the service road for us to access our okay. outfall sewer line that's been resolved both with the access road and the culverts under I believe it's under shut road or Dolson town road and uh, so from our perspective we're ready to move keep in mind this is only to East Main Street right. the East Main to West Main section which is the most complicated part of it has not been resolved with the county Portions of it have, as you go into the bus terminal, through downtown, through the Woolworths building, and some branches off of that. But for the most part, uh, the county executive has assured me that construction um, will, from the timeline that I've been given and that I shared with Elizabeth Albahar and the Middletown Trail Advocates, is that in March, Amy's will begin putting their water and sewer lines in, maybe earlier and that in April the trail construction will begin and that's what they've told me consistently for the last several months and I guess until we hear differently um, we'll accept them at their word thank you any other questions thank you mayor thank you Martha of Alderman Alderman Massey I just have a couple of things. Uh, one, as uh, John mentioned, tomorrow is Election Day. No matter who you're supporting, please at least go out and vote. Uh, it's, it's your right. It's your obligation. Uh, I know all candidates would appreciate at least you go out and vote. Two, John also mentioned Veterans Day coming up on uh, Saturday, November 11th. The Elks Club always has a ceremony. Uh, I hope that uh, as many people as possible will get out and support our veterans. And uh, finally, the mayor had mentioned the uh, budget. Uh, the, this council will be voting on the budget <clears throat> at the next meeting, which is Tuesday, November 21st. Prior to that meeting at 730, I will have a finance committee meeting and we will be discussing the budget. So if anyone has any questions, that would also be a time. And thank you. Burr. On record soon. I just uh, also would like to repeat uh, tomorrow being election day, encouraging everyone to vote. Polls are open at 6 a.m. and close at 9 p.m. If you don't know where to vote, uh, you can go to the New York State Board of Elections website, and there's a place for you to plug in your address, and it will tell you where it is that you go to vote. So I encourage everyone to please, it's your single greatest power as a citizen, go out, vote, be heard, and uh, Hopefully that uh, works out for some of the people I shared this room with. Um, I, uh, that's all I really have tonight. I, I was gonna address the young man, but I don't even think that it's worth it. I just don't appreciate people coming in here to make false statements. Um, I think it's also insulting to those of us who respect the political process and the rules that are in place. We did the work, everyone in this room, everyone on the ballot did the work, a lot of it. A strong effort in putting out, getting valid legal signatures, the, the amount that we're required, and we, we respected the process, and he did not. He doesn't have the right to come in here and make these false statements, and I think it's irresponsible and insulting to everyone here who did the work. And I'm sorry, that's all I have. Alderman Johnson. Uh, yes, please vote. Vote for whoever you think is good. Um, with respect to the Nix Hill presentation, I compliment the chief on moving that ball forward. Um, I don't see any downsides unless there were to be a cost prohibitive. I think it's a great opportunity for us to communicate with all the people in our area. Um, um, on behalf of Cornell Co-op, a member of that board, I want to thank uh, Park and Rex for moving that forward collaboratively. That's a great thing. And only the kids win. It's always a good, it's always a good game to play. With respect to the catch pond and Mr. Mayfield, I think 
Whoever is communicating should remind the powers that be that we also have the park and recs piece to this, and now that's being held up because of that. And um, patience is a virtue, but I'm not always virtuous. Uh, I will address the microphone. I take it very seriously. I, I've attended and conducted a number of public meetings in my life. And when you have an opportunity to address the council or the board or whomever you may be, that is an opportunity. In this case, we call it for the good of the city. Does that mean you only say things that are good? No, it does not. Uh, we're more than willing to accept criticism. However, it should not be thought by anybody that that gives you the right to come up and name somebody and malign them or accuse them of a crime regardless of how credible or non-credible that accusation may be. And if you are a member of the community and you want to accuse somebody of a crime by name, then you should conduct your local law enforcement agency and not come and speak at the visitor's mic for the good of the city. And I don't care who you are, and I don't care who you're accusing, and I don't care how credible it is. It's not appropriate and it's not acceptable. I called the point of order and I stand by it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just one thing, our second ward constituents meeting is on November 13th, next Monday night at uh, 7 o'clock right here. So we hope to see you. Thank you. Paul McClainer. Um, thank you. Uh, I hope everyone comes out for Veterans Day. You know, it's always the 11th month, uh, the 11th day, the 11th hour. So it's, it's uh, no excuse for not remembering it. Um, also, um, at Braymar, the um, post, with, post 151, the American Legion, is doing a service at Braymar, too. So if you couldn't make it into Middletown, the Elks Club, and you happen to be out there, and they've invited people there. So um, Election Day, everybody should be a citizen. Um, you know, th these are local elections, city, county. Um, get out, make your voice heard. And don't forget to turn the ballot over because there is the Constitutional Convention or constitutional mischief. But whatever, that question's on the back. You vote however you feel. And then there's two other propositions that um, both seem pretty reasonable. So, But we need you to go and vote. Uh, Middletown needs to show we have a good turnout. We have people who are involved in the process and who take government and being part of government seriously. That's keeping it public, so please vote. Um, it's getting cold. November 19th, the warming station is going to be opening again, and they will need volunteers. Uh, there's a training session. It will be again at St. Paul's, and it's the YMCA has stepped up to um, provide a facility that emergency housing was doing. And uh, they, they will be uh, overseeing the uh, staff, but they need two volunteers every night. We don't have Nancy to call people this year, so it's going to be difficult. Now, please consider it um, Wednesday, November 8th, and Monday, November 12th, uh, uh, November 13th, are training sessions at 7 p.m. for anyone considers volunteering. But, the, the number to remember is call Maryland at 342-2657. If you have anything to contribute, if you can volunteer, if you have any questions, um, but it's, it's a lot of dedication by a lot of people to keep people from freezing to death, to give them a safe place to be. So it's, it's a really good operation by the Greater Middletown Interfaith Council. So um, please step up and help. And uh, lastly, uh, Tuesday, November 14th, is Citywide Watch, because you asked for it. We were gonna wait till the spring, but people said, nope, we wanna do it in November too, so um, please come out and give us a reason for being there. Thank you. Alderman John Francois. Yes, uh, good evening. Uh, I also like to encourage uh, everybody to come out and vote tomorrow. Uh, I just gotta remind everybody, the fourth ward is the biggest ward in the city. I mean, we could be a major player in tomorrow's voting, and but only it's going to happen only if we show up at the poll. Please come out and vote. Thank you. All of them said. Hope everyone has a great night. Stay safe. Please bundle up. Don't end up sick. <laughs> New business. 
Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to transfer $500 within the Senior Center, <coughs> Senior Center 2017 budget for the Golden Area Transportation Line to cover unexpected overtime expense. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman John Vinsois. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Oldman Burr to accept a donation of $500 from the Green Collar Contracting Inc. for the Disc Golf Course. Resolution sponsored by Oldman Burr, second by Oldman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution <coughs> passes. Resolution sponsored by Oldman Burr to amend the city code fee schedule for the Parks and Recs Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. <coughs> Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to approve change order number three for the Sterling Street Sewer Project in the amount of $50,000. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Old Woman Graham Kassoon to transfer $1,425.82 within the Civil Service 2017 budget to accommodate a shortfall in travel expenses. Resolution by Old Graham Kassoon, seconded by Old Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Abstain. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to accept the proposal from Lehman and Getz for $95,000 to provide engineering and planning services for the preparation of plans, specifications, and contract documents for the Orchard Street, James Street, and behind the City Hall parking lots funded by the DRI grant. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt to hold a tax sale on Saturday, December 16th, 2017 at 10 a.m. in the Common Council Chambers to offer for sale all properties which have delinquent taxes, assessments, and or water sewer rents as of prior October 1st, 2016. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. <coughs> Those are sponsored by Alderman Witt to support the passing of Senate Bill S-1064 to increase penalties for passing a stop school bus, which requires revocation of a second offense. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Alderman Kleiner. Uh, I just want to thank School Board <coughs> Member Kevin Gomez for bringing these to our attention. I think it's an important issue. Thank you. What else? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt to support the passing of Assembly Bill A719 to increase penalties for passing a stop school bus, which requires a revocation of a second offense. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner to authorize the mayor to sign upon Corporation Council's review all rental and related <coughs> agreements for the use of the Paramount Theater for the 2018-2019 season. Sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? 
Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. The resolution passes. The resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois to amend the city code to add Chapter 4. 60 vehicles and traffic section 460-28 handicap permits to add one spot directly in front of 47 Bedford Avenue. By Alderman John Francois, seconded by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Sid. To reassign two police department vehicles to the City of Middletown Recreation and Parks Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Sid, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? We're all. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to declare five Middletown Police Department vehicles as surplus property, which these vehicles no longer serve the, <coughs> the needs for the city and would be disposed of in a manner most advantageous to the city of Middletown by the Chief of Police. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, second by Alderman Ram Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Roderick? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to accept Coppola Associates' proposal for architectural services for the DRI facade improvement program and authorize the mayor to sign a contract with <coughs> Coppola Associates subject to the approval of Corporation Council. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Burr. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey to authorize the mayor to sign any and all contracts and documents pertaining to projects funded through the Downtown Redup Vitalization Initiative, DRI, as sole signatory on behalf of the city. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Alderman Johnson. I just want to make one comment regarding the agenda in particular. I was a little distracted earlier. Um, these resolutions just, they reflect a tremendous amount of productivity on the part of the administration between all the projects that were delineated with the mayor's report. And um, I just hope that the residents of the community are understanding we're moving a lot of things forward with this, with this agenda. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Roll. Ram Kazoon. Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr to accept the incentive proposal from the New York Empire State Development ESD to assist in its project to expand infrastructure in the Middletown Community Campus in the amount of $500,000 and authorize the mayor to sign the contract. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Burr, seconded by Alderman Rickerson. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize the mayor to sign a proposal with BNL for design services for replacing the 20 inch water main from the water treatment plant to the Middletown Community Campus. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Old Woman Ram Kassoon to authorize the treasurer to transfer a total of $12,955.10 from the general fund balance to fund emergency repairs to the roofs at Michael Perkins and the Paramount Theater. Sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. President <coughs> Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize the mayor to sign a proposal with BVC to service the water treatment, uh, wastewater treatment plant aeration system in the amount of 40455 and transfer the amount from the sewer fund within the DPW budget. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? 
Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to authorize the treasurer to transfer $2,650 from the sewer fund balance to cover costs of the WEFTEC conference in Chicago. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt to amend the city code chapter 466 water to charge out of city users lower rates for water use if the same may be appropriate for economic development or other purposes significant, significant to the city. Resolution passed by Alderman Witt, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson that the city determines that the October 20th, 2016 finding statement issued by the Town of Goshen Planning Board for Amy's Kitchen appears to be adequately analyzed and present the environmental impacts and mitigation measures of the project and determines to adopt and issue said finding statement. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson to approve the Amy's Kitchen Agreement and authorize the mayor to sign the agreement and any other, any other agreements with Amy's Kitchen related to the project. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Massey. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Resolution passes. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois to authorize the mayor to sign an agreement for an engineering survey from Fusco Engineering for the former Middletown Psychiatric Center in the amount up to twenty thousand dollars. Resolution sponsored by Alderman John Francois, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Some passes. That is all for new <coughs> business. Local laws. Tonight we have a introduction to local law number five to amend chapters 389 sewers of the city code of the city of Middletown regarding out of city users. And this is sponsored by Alderman John Francois. Reading by Alderman John Francois. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Massey, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Roll. Graham Kassoon? Aye. Johnson? Aye. John Francois? Aye. Sid? Aye. Witt? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Burr? Aye. Massey? Aye. President Aye. Aye. Resolution passes. Move for adjournment. I thought I was going to have a second. So moved.